Hello students, welcome to the new session of the physiology. Now we will deal with the male reproductive system. First, in very short, try to revise what is the physiological anatomy of the male reproductive system. So, this is the testis. Now, if you look at the cross section of the testis, the testis is formed by number of long convoluted tubules and this tubules ultimately merge here. This is the called as rete testis. These are the seminiferous tubule. In the walls of the seminiferous tubule, the gametogenesis, that means the gametes that will be formed, right? And these gametes ultimately, both the ends of this seminiferous tubule, they will end here in the rete testis. From the rete testis, this sperms or the gametes, we call the sperms, they will go to the head of the epididymis. This is the coiled tubular structure that will be called as epididymis. So, this is called as the head of the epididymis and then this is called as the tail of the epididymis. What will originate from the tail of the epididymis? Vas difference. Right? So, the vas difference will originate from the tail of the epididymis and then the sperms can be carried out from there to the vas difference. Vas difference will enter the inguinal canal. From the inguinal canal it will enter into the abdominal cavity and through the abdominal cavity then it will go into the prostatic part of the urethra along with the ejaculatory duct then it forms the ejaculatory ducts and ultimately it will join with the urethra so the sperms can be ejaculated out through the urethra right in between the seminal content of the seminal vesicles contents of the prostate and even the contents of the bulbocavernous glands ultimately they will empty their content into the urethra and the, together the semen that will be formed that will be ejaculated out. Blood supply of the testis, there are the tortuous spermatic arteries that will be doing the blood supply to the this. This spermatic arteries will be having the counter current mechanism with the form plexus that is the venous system of the testis. The tortuous arteries, spermatic arteries, they will do go for the blood supply. The venous drainage is to the pampliform plexus. Now this is a counter current system. As you can see here, the counter current system means what? The flow which is lying near to each other, parallel to each other, but in opposite in direction. Now, what is the importance of the counter current system here? A common multiple choice question asked is that how much is the temperature of the testis or what are the temperature of the testis required for the spermatogenesis? So, one has to remember that the temperature of the testis is required that is lower than that of the body temperature. The temperature at which the spermatogenesis is possible or its maximum is 32 degrees Celsius. That means the body has to maintain that lower temperature of the testis and to help this, this is the counter current system. How does the counter current system can be helpful? Whenever the blood is passing to the spermatic arteries. Now, whatever the heat of the blood is being taken up by this venous blood which is going away. So that the testis will get the blood supply which is having the less temperature. So ultimately the temperature, one of the mechanisms by which the testicular temperature is maintained less is the because of the counter current mechanism of the testicular artery and the pampniform plexus. Next, what you have to remember is that this between the seminiferous tubule, these are the lipid containing cells. These are called as interstitial cells of Leydig. Interstitial cells of Leydig forms testosterone. Now we will go in the detailed structure of the seminiferous tubule. This is the cross section of the seminiferous tubule. This will be the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and this is the interstitium. As you can see here, the seminiferous tubule will contain two types of cells. This tall cells which are called as the supporting cells or Sertoli cells. So what is the name of this cells? Sertoli cells. These are important one to support the spermatogenesis, Sertoli cells. Whereas these are actually the cells spermatogonium which will ultimately going to form the sperms. First we will see about the what are the functions of the Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells as the name suggests they are the supporting cells. They secrete androgen binding protein. One of the important substance they secrete is androgen binding protein. Now remember one thing. 
for the spermatogenesis a high level of androgen testosterone is required and who maintains this high level of testosterone in this lume is the androgen binding protein so it will bind with the testosterone and so that the high level of the testosterone can be maintained in this lumen. So androgen binding protein is secreted by the Sertoli cells. Next it secretes inhibin. Sertoli cells secretes inhibin. What is the function of the inhibin? Inhibin is causing the feedback inhibition of the follicle stimulating hormone. Next Sertoli cells also secrete MIS. Can you recall what is MIS? Just as I told you in the few lectures back, MIS is Mullerian inhibiting substance, which will regress the Mullerian duct. What are the other functions of the Sertoli cells? As you can they see here, this Sertoli cells will join with the each other at the base. And even the spermatogonia will have to cross this, we will call this as a barrier. So, they will separate the interstitium. This will be the interstitium. This is the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. They will separate lumen of the seminiferous tubule from the interstitium and this is called as the blood testis barrier. So, this blood testis barrier is important to preserve the spermatogonium which are being there. It is important to maintain the environment of the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. As you can see here, the seminiferous tubule lumen has certain different components apart from that of the plasma such as they have, they have very little about protein and glucose compared to that of plasma but they are rich in androgens, they are rich in estrogens, potassium, inositol, glutamic and aspartic acids. Again some more functions of the Sertoli cells. As you can see here spermatogonia when they start division and formation of the gametes they should remain attached with the Sertoli cell. The junctions are being continuously being formed and then again they are being getting detached and the new junctions are being formed. But important thing one should remember is that this gamete should they should remain in contact with the Sertoli cells. Up till this is the stage of a late spermatids and then the sperms are there being released. So up till the maturation of the sperm is not taking place their spermatogonia cells, they should remain in contact with the Sertoli cells. So, this is again the function of the Sertoli cells. Now, next going to the spermatogenesis. So, as you can see here, this is called as the spermatogonia. And at the time of the adolescent now, when an adolescent is reached, puberty is reached now, some of the spermatogonium, they will start division and they will start the maturation formation of the gametes. So, they will have to cross this blood testis barrier and then the spermatogonium will divide into primary spermatocyte. This primary spermatocyte will again undergo into the meiotic division and with the haploid number of the chromosomes now, secondary spermatocytes will be formed. So, this will contain the haploid number of chromosome 22X or 22Y. And now, this secondary spermatocytes will undergo maturation to form the Late early spermatids and the late spermatids, which remains in contact with the Sertoli cells. And this late spermatids then get mature and ultimately they will be released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Now the fluid which is actually being secreted in the lumen ultimately and the moment must contraction of the seminiferous tubule, ultimately it will cause the moment of the sperms. But remember, the sperms are not motile in this. The, they, will, they will achieve the motility when they reach the epididymis. What are the hormones which are required for spermatogenesis? Follicle stimulating hormone, which is essential for the spermatogenesis. Androgens, very high level of the testosterone, which is required for the spermatogenesis. Right? There is role of estrogen also. How estrogen is formed? Because it is formed by the aromatization. That means the androgens will get aromatized into the estrogen and the, even the some level of the estrogen is also maintained in the lumen. So, estrogen is also required for the spermatogenesis. Coming to the structure of the sperm. What are the parts of the sperm? This is called as head and this is the tail part. This is the principal part of the tail. What the head contain? Head mainly contains the chromosomes. It is rich in the chromosome, DNA material. The head is covered by a 
acrosome. What the acrosome contains? It contains lysosomal enzymes. When it comes to the tail part, the principal part of the tail, it contains a layer of mitochondria and the sheath will be surrounding that. And this is the remaining part of the tail. This is the structure of the sperms. Sperms also contain one protein which is an uh, important channel, a calcium channel. This is called as cat sperm. Maturation of the sperm when it occurs in the epididymis, it requires the activation of this cat sperm channel, which is a calcium channel. So when the entry of the calcium occurs, the sperms will achieve the motility and it will start the movement to the epididymis. The sperms also has got the olfactory receptors. What this olfactory receptors are required for? Movement towards the ovum. So the sperms knows exactly the direction of the ovum to the olfactories that is the to the chemical substances and the chemical substances can be spelled by smelled by the sperms to the olfactory receptors remember the sperms will achieve the motility and the maturation process will take place not only in the male genital tract but also in the female genital tract lot of cholesterol is being covered over the acrosome so that the acrosomal reaction does not take place in the male genital tract and whenever the sperm is entered into the female genital tract, this cholesterol will be washed out and the further the sperm will achieve, achieve the further motility. So the, this process is called as capacitation, the maturation and ultimately the acrosome that is able to rupture and it is going to cause the reaction, acrosomal reaction. This process can be called as the acrosomal reaction and maturation. Now, when we see the content of the semen. When are the final product of the one which is ejaculated out from the male genital tract that is called as semen. The color of the semen is white or opalescent. The specific gravity is 1.028. The pH ranges from 7.35 to 7.50. Slightly it is alkaline. This alkaline pH is required so that the sperm does not become motile in the male genital tract. The sperm count, this is very important to determine the fertility. The sperm count should be 100 million per ml. With below 20% of them can be abnormal forms. But if the more abnormal forms are there, then it is going to affect the fertility. What are the components of the semen? What are the components which are contributed from the seminal vesicles? They mainly contributed 60% of the total volume. The most important component is fructose. Fructose is required for the nutrition to the sperms. So other components are phosphorylcholine, ascorbic acid, flamines, prostaglandins, then some bicarbonate, phosphate buffers are there which will try to maintain the pH. What are the components which are contributed from the prostate? The prostate has got one important component which is called as prostate specific antigen. Now what is this importance of the prostate specific antigen? This the level of the PSA will be increased in prostatic cancer. So this can be a very, very helpful tool to diagnose the cancer. What are the other contents from the prostate? Spermine, citric acid, cholesterol. I told you the importance of the cholesterol, phospholipid, acid phosphatase, fibrinolysine and fibrinogenase. As you can see there, there are some factors which can cause clotting. There are some factors which will break the clot. Why does the fibrinogenase is required? Whenever the semen is deposited in the vagina, it will initially it will go into the recess of the vagina between the cervix and the vagina and then a coagulum or a slight clot will be formed and slowly this clot will be then released and the sperms will be released from that and it will they will pass to the cervical os and into the female ureter. So to cause the clotting fibrinogenesis is required whereas to break the clot fibrinolysine is required. So these are the various contents of the semen. Now we will see the mechanism of erection. Erection is required for the coitus or the copulation to take place. What are the mechanism of erection? Afferent form. It is again a reflex, nervous reflex. What are the afferents for that? Afferents from the genitalia or that from the descending tracts, from the higher centers. These are the afferents which are there. Integrating center is in the lumbar segment of the spinal cord. So in the lumbar segment of the spinal cord, the integration can take place. And whereas the efferent one, these are the mainly parasympathetic. So erection is a parasympathetic process. This can be asked as, as a multiple choice question. So the parasympathetic fibers, which are mainly the pelvic splanchnic nerves, which are also called as nerva irrigentis. And they causes erection because they causes release of some vasodilators. 
such as acetylcholine, VIP and nitric oxide synthase. Nitric oxide is very important here. The role of nitric oxide to cause vasodilation and the erection. How is the mechanism of erection? You might have studied in your anatomy that penis is composed of the corpora cavernosa and the corpora spongiosum. This I can call it as just the bags which are completely empty. Whenever there is a vasodilation now, these bags will get filled up with the blood and the excess of enlargement of the penis will constrict the venous system. So the arteries they are being dilated, blood is being engorged into the penis and the venous system is partially constructed. So because of that, the stiffness of the penis that occurs and this is how the erection is possible. If the body wants to terminate erection or the termination of erection occurs because the vessels which are vessels, the arteries which are being dilated, again they constrict now and the blood supply to the penis that will decrease and that will terminate the erection. A common drug which is now being used is the Cydnafil or the Viagra which is commonly being used. Cydnafil, Tadafil or Vedrafil, these are the drugs which are useful to maintain the erection for longer time. A common question that can be asked is that what is the mechanism of action of the cydnafil? So for that you have to remember the effect of the nitric oxide. What is released by the nerva agent is nitric oxide. This nitric oxide is normally destroyed by phosphodiesterase enzyme. So that once the nitric oxide level, once it is destroyed by phosphodiesterase, nitric oxide level will come down and the erection will be terminated. Now this drug cydnafil what it will do, it will block this enzyme phosphodiesterase. So if the phosphodiesterase is blocked, what will the nitric oxide can remain for longer time and therefore the vasodilation can remain for longer time and the erection can be maintained for the longer time. The process of ejaculation. Ejaculation mainly occurs in two parts. We will call it as emission and ejaculation proper. What happens in the emission? The semen from the vas deferens goes into the ejaculatory tract. This is called as emission. And from the ejaculatory tract, when the semen come out of the urethra, that will be called as ejaculation proper. Again, this is the reflex. So what are the afferents for the ejaculation? Afferents are from the touch receptors of the glans penis or even from the higher centers and the spinal cord. They reach the spinal cord through the internal pudendal now. Integration occurs in lumbar and the sacral segment of the spinal cord. When it comes to the motor output, emission the first part of the ejaculation is a sympathetic response. The sympathetic fibers, they pass through the hypogastric nerves. They cause a contraction of the smooth muscles of the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles and the content of the vas deferens will go into the ejaculatory tract. Whereas the ejaculation proper is because of the nerve fibers which goes through the third sacral root and ultimately into the internal pudendal nerve. They cause a contraction of the bulbocavernosus muscle, a skeletal muscle. So that ultimately will cause the emission or ejaculation proper. In short about the male contraception, male contraception is possible with the help of the vasectomy. That is the vas difference that is being cut out. But the chances of maintaining of fertility back that will become less. So therefore the vasectomy is less popular relative to that. But this then also it can be promoted. And the use of testosterone to use as it will cause feedback inhibition of FSHLH and ultimately it can be used for the, to decrease the spermatogenesis and it can act as a contraceptive. But the level of the testosterone required is very high related to that. So therefore this still is under the consideration. With this we come to end of this lecture. Thank you.